Hey guys, it's John at Sin RC, and by request I am working on the extra 300 setup tonight. My voice has finally started to recover after all the talking I did the other day, and I, you know, needed enough willpower to do this again. It takes quite a while to go through some of these setups, and it takes a lot out of me mentally to, like, not even do any of this with a script. So I'm going to show you guys how I get all this set up. I will do my best to cover just about everything, and as usual, I will distribute the setup files for you for anybody using a spectrum radio which should significantly ease the process of getting up to speed so you can learn from my mixing and perhaps incorporate some of your own however this plane is very easy to set up i mean it really doesn't take much at all to get it up in the air It'd be easier if i wasn't working on so many projects all at the same time i'm certain that i would have an easier time if i did <laughs> follow my own advice on this but that's okay all right, so the first things first, uh, this is something I'm going to cover in the upcoming Night Timber setup video. One of the things I like to do is uh, make a clear distinction between the different wings when I'm setting them up, and I haven't done that here, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do it real quick. I want to make this one as fast as possible because I have other things I need to get to tonight, but I am more than willing to help you guys in the meantime while I can. So I'm going to grab one of these green zip ties, and those of you who are aeronautically minded can probably already see where I'm going with this. So this is the right wing, so we're going to get rid of both of these red zip ties. This is all leftovers from a different servo setup. I had to actually replace the servos in the wings just because one of them failed. And You know, with how I fly, I'm not surprised. I've done some pretty violent maneuvers in this plane, and the stock servos can only take so much. So one of the things I like to do for airplanes is I set them up with a zip tie system and I use a colored zip tie system so I can figure out which one is which based on just a quick glance. So I always use green zip ties and red zip ties. In rare exceptions do I ever change this. I use one zip tie for ailerons, two for flaps, three for elevators, four for rudder, and so forth and so forth if I really need to do so. So because these are only ailerons, or in the particular case of this airplane, flapperons, I've got one green, one green. So I'm plugging the right aileron into the correct port, and one red and one red, plugging it into the correct port. Uh, if you want to know how to get the voltage cable all set up, uh, please refer to my tutorial on how to set up your Vulcan jet from Freewing, because I covered that earlier today. I don't want to go over it in this video, I've already done the work, but basically the volt port is connected to the voltage cable that the, the uh, 637T, not TA, but 637T came with. And then I just plugged it into the volt port after splicing the wire leads in. I'm using the 637TA because I wanted additional uh, RF redundancy paths just to have the ability to uh, not worry about it so much. Um, you know, it's nothing worse than flying a plane and losing radio contact and going into fail-safe and hoping for the best. Okay, let me go ahead and get a battery for this jet. Jet model. Let me get a battery for this model. This place is a complete and total mess. Again, sorry about the <laughs> sorry about the stuff laying around, guys, but you know. When you're flying, sometimes you're you're crashing, and that has been the unfortunate reality recently. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my, what do you call it, um, extra profile. I was going to go flying tomorrow, but it's going to be very windy, and the place that I was planning to go flying is grass, because we're going to take Scott's Vulcan out and demonstrate the mixing setup that I set up for it. And unfortunately, it's just going to be too windy to really justify flying in those kind of conditions. For, for a maiden flight, really don't want to risk it. I'm also going to remaiden my Viper jet down there and remaiden the so. F-18. This is a really simple setup. Okay, I mean, there's really not much you can do with it, aside from what I'm showing you currently. But let's go ahead and get into the meat of it. So this is a, what we call, if you go into the aircraft type, this is a flapper on configuration. Okay, and the reason why this is a flapper on configuration is that I do occasionally use the flaps or the ailerons as flaps. Full flapper -ons. 
There is a bit of compensation in the elevator that goes into this. Uh, not much. You just need a little bit down to compensate. Uh, this thing will almost uh, come to a dead stop in midair with the flapperons extended. It's really quite impressive, but it is very unstable because there is absolutely no washout on the wingtip. The entire wing becomes a, an aggressively cambered uh, wing that's biting into the air very, very hard. So generally speaking, you're going to get an issue where one wing is going to stall first and it's just going to drop. Um, so it's it's not fun to fly like this. It's generally only something I, I throw in right above, like maybe three feet above the ground. It's three to six feet, uh, just to get it slowed down right before it touches down. Um, I, I am going to experiment with having it go straight up like this instead, just to kind of help bleed off some of those that speed and prevent it from uh, getting all squirrely. Um, the basics of it is this. I'm using what I call a Harrier flap mix. And this is how you see me flying around in a stable Harrier where the wings aren't rocking constantly. If you're in high angles of attack, AKA in a Harrier, you will find that this model nine out of 10 times is going to do a severe wing rock and it looks terrible in the air. And it also kind of, it just really does not breed a whole lot of confidence in me when I, when I think of it like that and watch it. So having it fly around like this really makes a giant difference. Uh, big credit to Michael Wargo from Precision Aerobatics here in North Carolina who uh, mentioned this idea and I've kind of adapted it into not just using it for unpowered elevator, uh, the 3D move where the plane just sinks straight down. Uh, I use it also to create stable Harriers in planes that uh, really would not otherwise be capable of them, including the Viper Jet, which can actually Harrier, uh, high alpha, whatever you want to call it. It's phenomenal. All right, so to set this up, this is really the like the only mix that I'm using aside from the the flap. Um, all you have to do is just go into your rate for elevator to left aileron and just set it to negative 100 and negative 100. And it's as simple as that. Uh, to make it even more stable, I've been tempted to set it up um, so that... Let's see, like, let's try to switch C and you'll see what I'm talking about. Well, I can set it up as a curved mix. So what this would do is kind of control how aggressive the ailerons move up in response to pulling up on the elevator. So in, in some ways, I'd rather have the, instead of it being a one-to-one, -one, where as goes. the elevator goes up, the, the um, ailerons move up, I'd rather have it move faster on the aileron so they come up faster than the elevator does so that it can get into a more stable Harrier without having to pull the elevator as far back as I, I mean, a lot of times I'm pulling it all the way back and I'm modulating the throttle the whole time to get it to sit. So I'm actually going to set this up while you guys are watching because um, I've been meaning to do this anyway. Um, I don't want to do this forever. I got to get back to setting up my F-18 at some point for my maiden on Thursday. Uh, but let's say at around 25%. We're going to go ahead and add a point and that will be point number two and we're going to have that be very aggressive we're going to have that be positive 50 percent up and then point one is going to be 100 percent and this is going to be an expo mix expo curve so what this is going to do is it's going to smooth out the the um the movement so it's not linear if you if you can see the screen really well you'll see that there's a difference in how it's treating it Okay. Oh, you know what? I have it set as the uh, the switch is the elevator stick. One second. That's why it was getting all wonky. Let's try that. So if you look at it from the side, you should be able to see it really clearly. Let's see. So I'm barely, like I'm pulling back the elevator to 15, but I'm getting nearly 60% aileron mixed in which I think really works well I'm going to test this out it also works in an inverse as well not as aggressively but it still works this might actually allow it to to do some pretty good inverted harriers uh, currently the issue I experience is the plane as it's inverted like this it tries to flop over itself if you give it any elevator input whatsoever uh, the 
the big EC1500 does that too, but I suspect that's just due to the twin engine design. But yeah, I mean, that's that's really all there is to this model. Uh, I'll show you the the rates that I'm using. Not rates, but um, the, what do you call it? The, the gains. That's relative gains. I always use relative gains. Currently, I have 20%, 20%, 20%. That's all I really need. But it's not even that high. It's actually rather low because it's half of that. It should be 10, 10, 10 because of the slider. When I pull that down, disabled. it's 0, 0, 0. Normal. In the center, it's 10, Stabilizer and at the top, it's 20. Stabilizer so when I'm flying this model, I'm flying with very little stabilization. Uh, if if you feel confident doing that, I would even recommend uh, considering it for yourself. It's really going to push your 3D piloting to the next level because you're actually going to see the the behavior of the aircraft, and the gyroscope isn't going to stabilize it as much. It's not going to um, fight off a lot of the the trim issues that you might have otherwise seen. I, I noticed that when I took my stabilizer off and flew it uh, in, in calm winds, I, it was having a lot of drift that I wouldn't even notice when the stabilizer was on. So I had to actually go out and manually retrim some of this to get it to fly much better. Um, once I started doing that and pushing myself out of my comfort zone, learning how to do torque rolls, even though I don't feel confident with the plane's wheels facing me in a hover, I pretty much, I, I think I've moved up to a newer level of, of piloting. And now I just need to start really honing in on some of these move maneuvers that I haven't done as reliably. Uh, one of those being a torque roll. I'm getting there to where they're starting to look good, but now I need to get them lower to the ground where I'm kicking up dust and, and uh, really showing some confidence in my piloting skills. And I believe you guys can do the same thing. Um, if you're watching my channel, really appreciate you guys being here. Um, you know, I, I do take requests like this. The only real issue with this going forward is I am going to sell my iX12 going forward and I don't think there's going to be a way to convert a uh, an iX20 file over to a DX or NX compatible setup unless somebody wants to volunteer to help me with that in which case I'd be awesome because I'd love to get as many of these airplanes as I own distributed into files that people can work with so you guys can work with what I consider to be the best mixing and the best setups available. Um, I really don't see the point of working with limited expo and limited uh, control authority and whatnot. I mean, this this plane has maxed out travel. I mean, I've got like 60 millimeters up, 65 millimeters down. The ailerons are basically air brakes. I actually probably need to tamp them down a little bit. Um, thinking like right here might actually be fine for a lot of the 3D maneuvering I'm doing just to make it a bit more uh, tame and a bit you know, easier to fly, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see how it all goes. I'm going to do some more flights with it maybe Thursday and uh, give it some testing. I hope this uh, helps you guys out. I hope you enjoy. As always, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think and what else you'd like to see. And I will talk to you guys later. Cheers. Have a good one.